Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again, long time no see. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing a movie from 2017 that could have been okay or decent, but I didn't like the ending. So that was the 2017 horror film, PG-13 horror film, Wish Upon. Now I bought this movie a couple months ago at, the, at Dollar Tree for on Blu-ray, but it just really disappointed me, man. I was just like with the last movie that I reviewed, uh, the... the um, what was it called? The Critters Attack? Yeah, I didn't like that movie either, and that was a waste of time. That was a mediocre film. This is a supernatural horror film directed by John R. Leonetti and uh, written by Barbara Marshall, starring Joey King, who was really good in the film, by the way, Josephine Langford, the sister of uh, Catherine Langford, I believe, Ryan Felipe, who I never liked, Ken Ki Hong Lee, who's the Asian guy, and Sydney Park, you may have seen her from Nickelodeon movies and shows, and, and Disney Channel. The film follows a teenage girl who is given a magic box that grants wishes but kills someone close to her each time it does. That's the premise. It was an interesting premise. But the problem is, every time someone does seven wishes, they die. So, what do you think happens at the end of this movie? And the problem is that the critics gave it negative reviews. I can understand why. Maybe they, they thought that they wasted the premise. But here, it's like, yeah, it wasn't horrible. It's just that the ending ruined it for me. Everything else, I thought the acting was fine. Joey King is a good lead. I like Sydney Park. I like the, uh, the, you know, the atmosphere of it. You know, there's a good score. Uh, it's not scary, but it does have some tension in it. The scene where the, she wishes that the girl would rot and her skin starts to fall off. And it, it's, you know, it's really... You know, it's a it's a tense visual, but here, yeah, it says it here. Wish upon is neither scary nor original, but it's a fundamental flaws as a horror movie may make it dest destination viewing for after midnight camp genre enthusiasts. Yeah, it's a campy movie, but it's it had some fun moments in, the, in, the, in that are ruined by the ending because uh, you know there, there's some kills that are okay. Uh, Cheryl and Finn is in the movie. She hasn't been in a movie in years. She's um. Uh, Mrs. DeLuca, the Shannon's neighbor and friend. So it was good to see her again. I hadn't seen her in a film. Elizabeth Rom is in the movie. She's uh, uh, Joanna's uh, mother that dies in the beginning of the film. Uh, spoiler alert in case you care. Jerry O'Connell's in it. He's the first guy that owned the music box. And O'Connell was not credited for the role, believe me. I, I, after seeing this movie, I don't blame him for not, not wanting to be credited. He's done better films than this. Tom Katz was a step higher than this. And the film that, you know, and it's is it a Blumhouse movie? It feels like a Blumhouse movie. Uh, no, it's Busted Shark. It felt like a Blumhouse movie, but light. Orion did it. Orion Pictures. The same people back in the 80s that did Robocop. Here, they just wasted it. I'm like, what the hell were they thinking? And the unrated version, there's nothing. It just adds a little bit more scenes that were cut out of the theatrical cut. I saw the, uh, the theatrical cut because I didn't care. A I minute's mean, not going to make a difference to this movie. If it changed the ending, then I would be happy. But no, it's just like, Joey King makes a wish. Her life is getting better. She wants guys to notice her. She wishes for, you know, for this. She wishes for the box to disappear. And then at the end, she's like, oh, I wish that I never found you. And I go back to the way things were. And then at the end, she gets hit by a car. And I'm like, fuck me. Why would you waste this freaking movie's premise on a stupid thing like that? I mean... The box looks like the thing from Hellraiser, the, the the puzzle box, and it's basically a music box that just it grants wishes, but it's a really terrible genie. Usually a genie would grant you three wishes, here it's seven, and it's just wasted. Like, you know, the, the, the writing is just on the wall, and it's a wasted potential. Like, the director is not horrible. This is the same director that did, he's he's been hit and miss. He did, um, he's directed, uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, again, that was more the writing that was a problem than, than the directing. He wrote, um, he did the cinematography for Scorpion King, Detroit Rock City, Joe Dirt, Honey, Razor Voice. He directed Butterfly Effect 2. Annabelle, yeah, this guy is hit and miss. Like, I, I really, most of the movies that he's directed are awful horror movies. Like, Annabelle, the first Annabelle I heard was horrendous. And uh, he did Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which is not a good movie. So... If it was in the hands of a better director, the guy knows how to shoot a movie, but he doesn't know how to direct certain actors and get make interesting characters work on screen. And he had a better writers. Yeah. Let's see the writers that wrote this masterpiece. 
I wish this movie didn't exist, but, you know, that would be too easy. He also did the cinematography for uh, Piranha 3D. That was the good Piranha 3D compared to Piranha and Insidious Chapter 2. He's more of a cinematographer. He, should, he knows how to film a movie, but directing is not really one of his strong points. Cheryl, Sherilyn, wait, uh, Barbara Marshall wrote this movie. Let me, let me look her up again. She's not a good writer. Like, I don't know what the hell she was thinking. Oh, you know what would make the movie interesting and give us some balls? Um, let's uh, destroy, let, let's just make the whole freaking movie pointless. She wrote uh, Viral, which I've never seen. Triple Dog, which I heard was terrible. Miscellaneous Crew on, on Terra Nova. And uh, she also wrote the, that TV movie that came out last year, The Bad Seed. And uh, she also did a Stargate episode, Stargate Universe. Not a good writer. I'm sorry. In the hands of a more competent writer like like James Wan, this would have worked. This would have easily been a really uh, a decent film. But you had a director that's not really that that has that's very. He's more misses than hits. And you have a writer that can't write. Yeah, the movie was gonna fall apart. And it's not the worst horror movie I've ever seen. Not even close, guys. I've seen way worse horror movies on the in the theater and way worse horror movies at home. But to be fair, the movie. It made a little bit of money, but it came out in the summer in 2017 where it didn't stand a chance. Like, Spider-Man Homecoming came out and it destroyed it, and I'm glad. That's a good movie. That's a movie that's competently made. It may be flawed, but at least it has some entertainment value, a lot of entertainment value, and a better cast, and it doesn't waste a premise. Here, it wastes a premise. You have a good lead that, that raises the material more than it should. She's beautiful. She's very talented, and she's wasted in this movie. If you want to see Joey King in a good horror movie, see the first Conjuring movie. That was a great performance, and she was younger in that. It's just better. It's like it had, that movie is creepier. It's got atmosphere. It's got uh, cra uh, crazy images. And, uh, yeah, jump scares. But here, you know, it just doesn't work. It's not scary. When the Asian guy is making more sense in this movie than the, than the main girl, you know you have a problem. And he's probably the best character in the movie. And he... What do you think happens? He doesn't die first, but it's just depressing what happens, you know, to, to most of the characters in this movie. He doesn't die, actually, but uh, uh, because of the wish at the end. But still, I wish this movie did was much better. But it's a mediocre film. And then, Josh, if you liked it, it's fine. I gave it a 5 out of 10 on IMDb. That's only being generous because I like the actors. But they're wasted in this role, in these roles. And just it, it could have been a lot better. The movie is just like a catastrophe waiting to happen. And uh, it, it just, it could have been a great movie in the, if in the hands of somebody better. Like I said, James Wan, but he was busy doing, I think, an Insidious movie or something. And he was doing Aquaman, so he was too busy. But anyway, yeah, Wish Upon is a thumbs down. It's a meh film. It could have been better. That's the problem. Just like with Critters Attack, this could have been a lot better. It didn't need... It didn't have a big budget. It cost like less than $20 million and it could have done a lot better if it was more entertaining and R-rated and better written and better directed. Then it would have been not a masterpiece, but at least more passable. Here it just barely is watchable. But anyway, if you want to see, like I said, see Conjuring or Conjuring 2, that's probably better than this easily. I haven't seen Conjuring 2, but I heard good things and it's more has more tension than this freaking movie. But anyway, Wish Upon was just a, a, a dud for me. But hey, I only paid a dollar for it. So I have wasted way more money on worse films. So, But if you don't want to watch it, I don't blame you guys. But anyway, that's my quick review on Wish Upon. Yeah, I wish it didn't happen. See you guys in the next video.